They found it on Scotland's doorstep. Oil, 8,000 feet beneath the seabed. But the problem was the 400 feet above it. The answer? To build steel towers. Then to construct working platforms from which to drill. That was the plan. This is the place. You know, I remember this as a beach. So watching what was happening here, I didn't really understand it. But realized that this was a revolution. This was something different than the Highlands. And the area embraced it. So they had to bring in uh, workers from the industrial centres in England and uh, Glasgow, for instance, uh, people who were fabricators, welders, riggers, people who had been in shipbuilding. They were called, you know, travelling men. Three years ago, there were only fishermen in Cromarty. Today, there are more than 2,000 builders and welders, some of them foreign, and all of them suddenly put down in the middle of the countryside. 600 of the travelling men were holed up in a couple of ageing Greek cruise ships that have clearly seen better days. When we went looking for a uh, labour camp, why we found these ships and decided that this was the uh, best available. There's no facilities for the men on the boat. The men can only drink, which... What else is there for us to do? Always ends up in fighting. There's fighting on the ship. If you come on here on a Saturday night, there's at least ten fights a night. The Cromarty Firth is best known for its involvement in the fabrication of the oil industry 50 years ago. The area is undergoing a transition. The communities around the Firth now decommission the structures they once built. The transition and the dormant oil rigs currently plaguing the Firth have inspired my thesis project. A crucial methodology within my work is documenting places and objects using photogrammetry. I collect digital artefacts rooted in the place they were photographed, which then directly inform my designs. I took drone footage of an oil rig called Transocean Leader, which enabled me to build an extremely accurate 3D model of the structure. I use this model at my desk throughout my research to understand the complex levels and spatial expanses on board the vessel. I have proposed a new form of coastal urbanism which investigates the practicalities of a community living on oil rigs, examining how a society might positively respond to the climate emergency. Each module has its own character creating a network of different yet complementary districts. You enter the scheme from below deck. You look up through the moon pool, where drill pipes used to be sent down into the crust of the earth. Lifts and stairs fill the void and bring you up to the main deck. Kallik has been planned to behave as an extension of a place, offering what Invergordon does not. The two communities are intended to support each other. Invergordon looks to emerge out of economic deprivation as Kallik begins to steadily establish itself as a destination. Inspired by Jan Gell's book, Life Between Buildings, I have seeked to create a series of spaces within spaces. The once exposed industrial environment has been transformed into a sheltered and green condition. The park, eatery, market and housing are all community sustained. Amongst the bustle, it is sometimes possible to catch a glimpse of the water and hills beyond. A mix of new and retrofitted spaces conjure an environment of discovery and industrial heritage. The park is a place for people to bump into each other, to spontaneously meet and organise events as the mood dictates. My thesis has been informed by the Firth's past, but represents its unfolding future. One day, the renewable revolution in this part of the world will slow down, and the floating rigs can be used somewhere else.